Good evening, friends and fellow ghouls. This is your host inviting you through the squeaking door of the inner sanctum for another delightful visit with creatures you'd hate to meet on land or sea. Or in dark alleys. <laughs> well, friends, now that summer romance is flourishing, this young man's fancy lightly turns to thoughts of lovely murder. <laughs> the reason for that is because I have a one-track mind. I can think of the nastiest things in the balmiest weather. When I see the first tender flower buds open their delicate petals, I immediately think how nice they look on some murderous grave. <laughs> Tonight's inner sanctum mystery, House of Doom, was written by Milton Lewis and stars Santos Ortega in the role of Mark with Charlotte Holland as Lorraine. All right, friends. Turn out the lights. Lie down on your slab. I mean your sofa. And get ready to scream for joy as we hear a terrifying story that could happen to anyone who's a murderer. Ready now. Hold tight and listen. People in that section of New England call the little peninsula David Jones's hand because the sharp and jagged rocks formed a murderous angry fist thrust out into an everlastingly angry sea. There was only one house on David Jones's hand. Mark Douglas lived there with his second wife, Lorraine. And folks whispered that something had happened to Mark and that despite his wealth, he couldn't cure a mind that was gradually losing its reason. The rain. Look at that storm. The rain is beating down like bullets. The wind is roaring like a monster. <gasps> Did you hear someone scream? No, Mark. Are you quite certain? Yes, Mark. Well, you still want to go out? I promised Mrs. Daly I'd come. It's just down the road. Really? And what's so important about you going? Oh, Mark, I, I just want to see her. We, we were going to play a little bridge. Now, Mark, why don't you come in here? No. Why not? You've locked yourself in this house like a prisoner for months. You can't go on like this. I don't want to go with you, and that's the end of it. Then why do you object to my going? I don't want to be here alone. I I can't bear it when I'm alone. I, there. I'm positive I heard someone scream. No. Yes, I did. It was a woman. Woman screaming for help. Didn't you hear it? No, Ma. No? Please, I want to go now. Lorraine, I'm afraid to let you go. Afraid? Why? I'm afraid something might happen to you. No, well, what could possibly happen? The, the same thing that happened to, to Betty. Betty, your first wife. She, she went out on a night like this. Alone. Down that rocky road. And the next morning, I found her body on the beach, covered with seaweed, like some horrible thing that had been chewed, mauled, and spit up by a murderous sea. I can't see her now, and then I've got to get out. You'll do what I tell you. No. You will. Oh. Poor Anne. Forgive me, I'm sorry. I'm terribly sorry. Forgive you. Shall I forgive you for the months you kept me locked up here? Waiting on you and listening to you, Lorraine. Get me this, Lorraine. Get me that, Lorraine. I hear screams, Lorraine, I'm afraid. And now you've been fighting me. Well, I can't bear it. I'm leaving. Lorraine, come back, Lorraine. I'll be all right. I'll be all right without it. How was that? Oh. Just the wind. It's Betty. Help me, Mark. Betty, where are you? Ah! Betty, where are you? Tell me, tell me. Can I hear it? What's happening to me? Where's the phone? Honey, you must be hearing things. Hello? Is that you, Richard? Yes. 
This is Mark. Mark Douglas. Oh, how are you, Mark? Hello. A bit under the weather. Well, I don't blame you on a night like this. I... I'm here all alone, Richard. Where's Lorraine? She went to... Mrs. Daly's place. This may seem kind of silly to you, but... Would you please come over? Now? Yes, now, right away. As soon as you can get here. What's wrong? Well, nothing. Nothing really, but... Richard, I can't stay here alone. <laughs> Did you hear something? What? A woman. A woman screaming for help. I can only hear you, Mark. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. You wouldn't hear it over the telephone. What are you talking about? These screams. These screams I keep hearing. It's been going on for months. I think it's Betty. Richard, you've got to come over right away. I can't be here alone. I can't. What is it, Mark? What's wrong? She's at the door. Who? The woman. Goodbye, Richard. Mark, no! Betty, she's come back. Open the door. I'm coming. I'll open the door. Betty. There she stood. Her face covered with seaweed. Her arms held out to me. She leaned forward and touched me. And then something snapped in my brain. What? What happened to me, You fainted, Mark, that's all. Fainted? Yes, you must have received a bad shock of some sort. But those screams... Look, he's standing at the door. You must have imagined it, Mark. You're not well. Imagine it. She was standing right there. What's the matter, Mark? Look. Look there on the floor. It's you. She's come back to torment me. To torture me, to kill me, possibly. Mark, what are you saying? Now, look, you've got to leave this house. That's what's doing it, this horrid, hideous old house. Lorraine, do you love me? Really? You think I could have stayed here these last few months if I didn't love you? Maybe. Maybe if I tell you, it'll be easier to bear. Maybe if I tell you, you might find some way out. What will be easier to bear? In my desk drawer, there's a flashlight. Hmm? Get it. All right, but what are you trying to tell me? You'll know in a moment. I have the flashlight. Now, go to the stairs. No, no, there. Next to the picture. But why? There's something I must show you. You know, everyone believed my first wife died by accident or suicide. She was a very excitable, neurotic girl. No one, except you, Lorraine, knows that she was murdered. Murdered? Yes, by me. It was carefully planned. I wanted her money and I... You can't betray me. You think I ever would? No. Put your hand on the post. Hmm? Underneath the banister. The fourth one. That's the one. Now twist it. Go on, twist! To your right. All right. There. You see? It's a trap door. It's built into the floor. Turn the flashlight down there. Huh? Go on, turn it into that blackness. Oh, there's water. Yes. Can you see those rocks? She fell down there when I sprung the trap. Stuck her head against those rocks. When the tide changed, washed her body out of that subterranean cabin into the sea. And then washed it up on the beach. And now do you understand why I can never leave this house? Close it, that door! Close it! How, Mark? Put the post to the left. There. Now. No. How did you find out about this door, Mark? I discovered it when I examined the house years ago. It was empty then. It had been empty for years. And you chose it because of the door? Yes. But I've gotten to hate it. Mm. I've gotten to hate every board, every window, every sound... I know I'm going to die here in the sea, and she's going to kill me. She's going to murder me for what? Lorraine, take your hand off that post. Don't! My daddy ran in the trap door! Oh, 
Oh, hello, Richard. I received a phone call from Mark tonight, and I've... Oh, man. It looks so strange. Do I, Richard? And so... So beautiful. Oh, no, no. No, you're not, Richard. Not now. Where's Mark? Well, that... That just it. I, I don't know. I went out to Mrs. Daly's, and, and then I changed my mind, and... And when I returned, he was gone. I'm I'm worried, Richard. What did he tell you on the phone? He sounded absolutely out of his mind. Completely hysterical. Complained of hearing screams. In a terrible state. Oh. Lorraine, do you think that he could have... Yes, that's, that's what I'm worried about, those clips. It may not be too late. We'd better search for him. Yes, I'll come with you. I think you'd better go home. No, Richard. You, you've been up all night. Police and the Coast Guard are searching for him. I don't see how it could do any good for us to search these beaches. Mark may be here somewhere. Well, we'll find him. Hello! Hello there! Who's that? Why, the fisherman down the beach there. I think he's found something. Hello! Hello there! We're coming! Look, look on the rocks near them. Yes, perhaps. I can see it very well in the mist. Oh, here, yeah, yeah. I found a body. Where is it? Here. Right there. Just over there, stumbled across him. Oh. Uh, who's with him? A woman? Yes. Is it my husband? Oh, I didn't know it was you, Mrs. Douglas. Here in the mist. Uh, you'd better not look. I will. We should take away the seaweed so I can see his face. Richard. You won't, I will. <laughs> well, friends, how'd you like to live in the house of doom? Hmm? Cozy little place to spend a short life, but a loony one, isn't it? You know, a little home like that would be our answer to the housing shortage. Just build a few of them and you won't have any tenants to worry about. <laughs> well, friends, let's get back to our story. Two years after the death of her husband, we find the lovely Lorraine and the house on Davy Jones's hand, staring out the window, just as her husband had done on the night he was murdered. She's married again to her husband's friend, Richard Belmont. Are you ready, Lorraine? Yes, Richard. Could you help me with my raincoat, please? Of course. Thank you. Will Kathy be there? Oh, I don't know. I suppose they asked her. At any rate, they'll all be glad to see you. Why, this will be the first time you've stepped out of the house in months. I can't help it if I've been ill. Lorraine, there's no reason to get angry. I'm sorry. It's just that I, I don't care to go out in a storm like that. Just a short trip down the road. I know it. Well, it's a little rain. You're in very good health now. Please don't talk about it. Okay. You ready? Yes, I'm quite ready. Thank you. Let's go. Oh, I can't go. All right. Richard, please close that door. I'm coming here. What's the matter with you? Nothing. I, I just don't want to leave here tonight, that's all. I was afraid of this. Were you? Something weird. Something queer about the way you cling to this house. Though it held you trapped. Mark was that way before he died, too. Please don't talk about Mark. Why not? What are you afraid of? Nothing. Nothing except to leave this house. Nothing except that you jump at every sound. Do you think I don't notice things? Do you think I'm a fool? Where are you going? Out. If you won't come with me, I'll go alone. I can't stand this place another moment. No. I've been locked up in here for days. I feel like a trapped animal. Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute, Richard. Don't go. Why not? Because I'm asking you not to. Richard, please stay with me. I don't want to be in this house alone. Please stay. I hear things when I'm in this house alone. But you don't leave me. Your life may, be, may depend on it. Please, please, Richard, don't go. Goodbye. Richard! Richard! 
the door. That's odd. Yes. And what's odder is that someone knocked at the door and left the field. Now, Lorraine, you haven't been having those hallucinations again. But they're not hallucinations, Richard. I heard someone call my name. Now, Lorraine. Please, Richard. Don't come near me. Stand over there just where you are. Very well. But, uh, why are you standing there holding the post? You shall know, presently. Do you think you deceived me, Richard? What are you talking about? About Cassie. You're in love with her. That's nonsense. You would like to have my money and Cassie, wouldn't you, Richard? That's why you've been playing these tricks on me. What tricks? Calling my name, leaving the seaweed out there. Why should I want to do that? To make me confess. Confess what? That I murdered Mark. You... You murdered Mark. Yes. How did you first find out, Richard? Did you hear me call out in my sleep as I heard Mark do? Yes. Mm-hmm. That's how I learned that Mark murdered his first wife. It's very difficult to keep a murder a secret. The strange satisfaction in being able to confess it. Why are you telling me this now? Because you wanted to know. That's why you played these horrid little tricks on me. What makes you think I've played tricks, Lorraine? Because I played yes. Even to using the seaweed. How could you have murdered Mark? I was waiting for you to ask me. He was a powerful man. You couldn't have pushed him off those cliffs. No, I couldn't have. And you were never out there with him? No. But everyone knew he was mentally ill. Everyone suspected suicide. Yes, and how very convenient. How could you have killed him? I'll show you, Richard, since you're so anxious to know. Don't move. Richard, why did you leap away? I see it now. The rocks and the sea down there. You would have killed me if I hadn't leaped away in time. Come here, Lorraine. No. No, Richard, let go of me. There must be a subterranean passage down there and the body gets washed out to sea. That's why you never left this house. You were afraid someone would discover your secret. Richard, what are you going to do? What do you expect? 
No, no. And why shouldn't I? You did it to Mark for his money. If it'll be any satisfaction to you, Lorraine, that's exactly why I'm holding you here now for precisely the same reason, your money. And since you take so much pride in being right, Lorraine, I'll tell you one more thing. You were quite right about Kathy and my said you weren't home. Did she? Well, she called up frantically on the phone. I swear she sounded half insane. Where is she? Why, she isn't here, Kathy. I came back from the dailies. In fact, I never got there. When I returned a moment ago, she was gone. Richard, do you think... I don't know. A woman in her mental condition is very apt to destroy herself. Destroy herself? Then you'll be free... And you and I... We mustn't think of that now, Kathy. She may still be out there somewhere. We've got to try to save her. If we can. Come on, let's look for her. <laughs> Kathy, you can't leave this house tonight. It's not in a storm like this. And why not, Richard? It was on a night like this that Lorraine was killed three years ago. I... I'm afraid to let you go out. You're my wife, and I love you, and you mustn't leave me alone. I can't stand this house another moment. Locked up with you here night and day for months. I can't leave, Kathy. You must stay. I can't bear it here alone. I'm going. Where? To see some man? Is that what you're going? Some man? That must be another of your hallucinations. I'm just going down the road. I've got to see some human being who's in his right mind, or I'll go out of my mind myself. Kathy, don't leave it. Did you hear it, Dan? Hear what, Richard? That voice. A woman's voice. Calling for help. No, Richard, I... I didn't hear a thing. Are you sure? Yes. Kathy, don't go. Stay with me. No. I can't stay here another minute in this place. If you invented the torture, the evil, and the doom, it couldn't be worse. I I hate every board, every door, every piece of it. I can't stand another instant. Goodbye, Richard. Kathy! Kathy! No. Have I been talking in my sleep? Hmm. Maybe I should tell her. I'm sure I could trust her. Richard! Hooray! It's Hooray! Come back! Richard and Kathy aren't going to go down that trap door. Then you just don't have any imagination. Or you just haven't heard enough in a tangle mystery. <laughs> of course, we have a very uplifting moral for these gruesome shenanigans. It's taken from the haunted words of Poulter Geist, who said, Always live in a house that's haunted by ghosts. Vampires, werewolves, zombies, and spooks. You'll never have a dull night. <laughs> Inner Sanctum was heard in the United States over CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System, and has been rebroadcast for servicemen and women overseas through the facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education. <laughs>